Um, um, I'm going to be, oh, and we're going to say that this isn't going to work. No, yep. Um, uh, talking in the run three five about something called red ear syndrome. Um, so um, uh, it uh, meets the kind of criteria for one three five in that it's um, it's rare. There's an, uh, a couple of hundred cases um, in the literature spread across um, headache, pediatrics, uh, dermatology, ENT, and it's only relatively recently described. Um, it consists of episodes of burning and redness of an ear, usually unilateral and usually side locked, and the disturbance is focused on the external ear and mainly the ear lobe. Mild to moderate pain levels um, of short lasting attacks. It's often chronic with daily attacks, um, which can range from one to um, many attacks in a day. Um, as well as a kind of a burning pain, there is um, a prominent redness. Um, the ear can swell and that swelling and redness can uh, spread into um, around the face and the jaw and into the neck. Um, quite often there are cranial autonomic features, but migrainous features are less common. And quite often, as well as spontaneous attacks, um, they can uh, trigger attacks by rubbing um, their earlobe. Um, so it's, it's, um, uh, it can create quite a dramatic uh, effect. Why people get it, um, we don't know. Um, the um, um, flushing of the face is due to a parasympathetic um, innovation or uh, activation, whereas um, flushing of the ear is a, um, uh, a sympathetic um, uh, lack of sympathetic um, drive. So it's thought that um, for the red ear syndrome, there's an imbalance of this parasympathetic sympathetic tone. Um, it can be seen uh, alongside a lot of other primary headache conditions. So there is an argument that it could just be a symptom associated with those. But there are also some secondary cases who tend to be younger, um, who can have upper cervical nerve root trauma. Um, it's been seen as part of an atypical trigeminal neuralgia, um, as part of a herpes infection, and also um, uh, uh, with problems invading or compressing the carotid body and the sympathetic um, uh, um, outflow from there. In terms of how to treat it, um, uh, it's rare, um, so there's absolutely no evidence for anything. Some people just find that local ice packs um, can be useful. Um, there's been a few case series of indomethacin um, uh, being useful, but just as many saying ibuprofen does the same thing. Um, the neuropathic agents such as gabapentin, pregabalin, um, um are quite often um, used in case um, series. Um, flunarazine has also been used. It's the headache doctor's one to use for anything that's a bit weird and wonderful. Um, propranolol has also been used and there's also been some um, case series of things like nifedipine and verafamil um, and also um, uh, quite a few case um, series have used nerve blocks so either greater auricular nerve blocks so that's um, usually lidocaine uh, in the temporal area um, or I've um, uh, seen a patient um, who was um, uh, well managed with uh, greater occipital nerve blocks so um, a, a rare uh, syndrome, but something um, that's one of those odd things that a patient may say they've got um, uh, that we can't explain um, and um, an idea about ways that you can treat it if you think you've seen it. Thank you very much.